the network city or network society is here already. It already exists. If you've ever read it, and if you haven't, I recommend it, Alex Pemper's book, Social Physics. It's about big data and how big data already exists and is expanding. And if you look at Google, Amazon, Facebook, everything together, you can get as much data, you know, on people's behavior, what they consume, what their leisure time is, uh, what their relationships are, and through sentiment analysis on places like Twitter, how strongly they feel about it, that you can organize cities in a way that meets that analysis. And that organization can be done better than if you used focus groups, if you used um, opinion polls, or even if you used referenda. Referenda is a snapshot in time, but using big data in the way that Alec Pentland describes it is organic. You can measure movements over time. Now, this is quite a danger to democracy, because why do you need democracy if you have the state, if you have organizations who can actually assess what you want at any point of time and how that changes over time. How can deliberative democracy work in that? What's the role of the voluntary sector in that when you've got people in some sort of new brave new world doing these things for you? Some people argue that this is the future, this is how it's going to happen. Well, for me, Global Net 21 that we set up is a way of trying to reintroduce the importance of democracy in a time when we're having big data. Big data challenges democracy, challenges deliberative democracy, and you have to find a way of trying to challenge that in, in, in a way that brings people back into the centre of things. So what we did is we used social networks to try and get people together to discuss the big issues of the 21st century. And we used the meetup site, first of all, because it is the best site for getting bottoms on seats. And we began to organise meetings in London and keep people talking about the big issues. We then, we then began to use other networks as well, Facebook <coughs> and Twitter and, and LinkedIn and so on, Google+. I know people don't like these big, but you know, I was talking to some people here, they don't like Facebook and Google, but if you want to get the big audiences, you have to use them when you look for alternatives. I'm sorry, you have to get into bed with the devil. But we used all of these in order to get people to come to these events and discuss it. And, you know, over a period of time, we've now got about 30,000 people in our social networks. We run 75 events a year. And in those 75 events, we're more than 75 events, but in those events, we get people together face to face, sometimes in the House of Commons where we drink with politicians, sometimes where we collaborate with other organizations and do events together, sometimes where we have small deliberative discussions, and we increasingly now use webinars, because you may have a network city, but in the global age, communities are not just based on geography. They're based on space. They're based upon people with common interests getting together wherever they are in the world. And global web webinars allows the people, of people in one city to communicate with people in another city and learn from each other. Alex Pentland, in his book, says, you know, People don't really understand change in society. It's not people who have the best ideas that are important. It's people who, have, who know how to harvest other people's <coughs> ideas. That's what Google does. That's what all the big data people do. They know how to harvest other people's ideas and turn it to their advantage. We have to create social networks to harvest other people's ideas and bring them into a democratic, deliberative way of thinking. So we use GlobalNet and all the networks we use to do that. We then try and work with other organizations um, to try and involve people who are involved in democratic and community services uh, to engage in that way. So we do a lot of work with organizations like a local government information unit to try and talk about how councillors and officers can get, engage with communities by using social networks, by setting up Facebook groups, by using Facebook Live and live streaming, by talking to people online. We've done this part of Global Net, which we've got on Facebook and on Meetup. We've also started in where I live, Enfield, a local group called Enfield Voices. We've got one in Southwark, we've got one in Cambridge, where we can try and engage councillors and others in talking about the issues using online methods. We also work with an association of housing associations called GUAC, Give Us a Chance, where we're looking at how we can showcase good practice 
so people can learn from each other and improve and how they could develop partnerships. So what we're trying to do basically is not just look at service delivery, which we do because some of the issues we talk about, things like loneliness, we've got a meeting coming up soon in the House of Lords on the crisis of social care, we look at issues like that, but we also, I think as our primary aim, try to get people to network, to discuss the future, to discuss ideas. Because it seems to me that if you don't do that, you may think, some people say ideas, you know, talking, it's, you know, but it's action we want. But if you don't get people to talk together, to find what each other wants, to harvest each other's ideas, you won't combat this society of big data that I talked about right at the beginning, which is with us now, which is growing, which is about the big corporations and big government using big data to actually design our societies based upon that data, which is incredibly extensive. Democracy will take a back seat if we don't create alternative methods of engagement and co-production to deal with it. And basically that's what GlobalNet is about, to get people together to do that and to work together in that deliberative and discursive way. And I think that's incredibly important. Have I kept my seven minutes? Pretty much have. Thanks very much, Francis. That's great. <laughs>